Hello everyone and welcome back to the show Tip the Tea. I'm your host Angie E where we talk about everything from motivational, inspirational and of course the tea. So tune in anytime on YouTube and Can TV to watch all previous episodes. You don't want to miss it. Today I have a very interesting show. We have um, a doctor um, that's the chief of staff of the United States of America Republic. Uh, it says, our, the, our future is in our hands. Uh, he's under the, the leadership, like I said, of Dr. Mustafa Shabazz L, uh, Chief of Staff of the USAR, which is USAR, which is called the United States of American Republic again. So we're going to um, ask some questions, some well-needed questions. I've had a, a lot of reviews. And a lot of comments and questions from my viewers. So here you go, viewers. Today we have him on the camera. We're going to let him steal the show. And we can ask all the questions you possibly want. So let's introduce him now. None other than Mr. Dr. Shabazz. How are you doing today? Thank you so much for joining me today on Tip to Tea. Um, and taking out the time for your bi very busy schedule. So I have been asking over and over and over so many of my viewers so many reviews so many comments they want to know about the moorish americans and a lot of people want to know their nationality that that don't know never heard of it but now are waking up so that's why i asked you to come along and be on the show and you could tell them about it so i do have a few questions the first question i would like to ask you is um, um, how long, how long have you first been a uh, Moorish National American? Um, and how did you get, and how did you obtain the title doctor? Okay, well, I do want to say that mm -hmm. I was born Moorish American. We all are born Moorish American naturally. Okay. How I found out that's what I was is by studying okay. our history. Mm -hmm. Which led me to being a Moorish, black or more. And I started thinking, what is a Moor? What is that? So I started doing more research. It led me to the United States of American Republic. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. So just to find out that we, we were already Moors. Okay. It was interesting because we always thought we were black, mm -hmm. African, mm -hmm. Negro, colored, and things of that nature. Okay. To find out differently. I woke up one morning. Mm -hmm. I was staying in Virginia at the time. Mm -hmm. And I was calm. I'm looking at the ceiling. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, my life is fictitious. Mm -hmm. And my inner God told me to Same. come home, oh. leave, mm -hmm. line up. So I left. Okay. And I find myself here in the province of Illinois. All right. And is that when you discovered that you, well, you say you had said that you heard a voice or something saying that you are more, a Moorish American, right? So, so after knowing that, what steps did you take after then on? Well, the to, first step I made was to just announce I am a Moorish American. Then I made a phone call. Okay. I started asking questions. The first person I spoke with was Travis Austin Bay, Secretary of State for the United States of American Republic. Okay. He gave me so much information. <laughs> I didn't know anything about what he was talking about. Mm. I didn't have uh, the slides I did. Okay. But I researched everything. And I came. Like I said, the inner voice told me, go. So I left everything behind. Mm. I was living on 19 acres of land. Wow. And you left everything. I left everything behind. Because... It's dedication. Yes, it is. That's, that's wonderful. My spirit wasn't free. Mm -hmm. I knew that. Excuse me, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I had to do what's best for my spirit. Okay. I had to do what God wanted me to do. And that was to line up with the law, to be a freeman. Naturally, we're born free. 
Okay. But within the last 500 plus years, we have not been born free. Mm. We have been born in corporations. U.S., United States. Okay. Corporation. Mm. Mm. Okay. So, um, so, okay, and then how did you obtain the, or receive the, the, um, the doctors, your doctorates or doctorates? Well, I was sick. I was born with asthma first. My mother brought me into this world sick. And I remember taking shots. I remember taking shots. I can't breathe, I can't breathe. Taking shots and breathing on machines. Most of the time, most of my childhood life. Mm -hmm. When I got older, <coughs> I gave myself cancer. It started in the testicles. And you it started gave to yourself spread. cancer? Yes. How did you give yourself cancer? Well. That's a beautiful question. Wow. Yeah. I gave myself cancer because I was eating dead things. Okay. Which does not assimilate with the body. Mm -hmm. Because what's dead is dead. just that. Right. I'm alive. So my mucous membrane was corrupted. That's where the cancer started. Where the corruption was at. Where it was compromised. Mm -hmm. And once I start, found that out, I started studying Dr. Sabi's, our late great brother, Dr. Sabi lessons. Mm -hmm. And I started ordering herbs. Okay. Once I cured myself from the sickness, mm -hmm. I started to reach out to others. I had put on my Facebook, cancer and asthma can be healed. Mm -hmm. So I worked with my first diabetic patient, Patrick White, from, uh, he's in Florida, but he's from Jamaica. Mm -hmm. But he's in Florida now. Mm -hmm. Diabetes too. And I healed him within 90 days. Oh, wow. So they gave me the title, Dr. Mustafa Shabazz L. Oh, that's how you received so it. So that's how I received the title. Wow. I remember his wife calling me. She was so happy. You mm -hmm. heal my husband. You heal my husband. I'm like, who was your husband? Right? right. I didn't have the flags I did that he was married. Right. Mm -hmm. I used to drive sit in my truck. So I'm in California. Yeah. I get a phone call. I answer my phone. Hello. Mm hmm. It's a woman. Mm -hmm. She's so happy. Oh, that's you heal my husband. Mean. You heal my husband. Who is your husband? Right. <laughs> she that's says true. Patrick White. Yeah. Oh. That's oh. <laughs> I didn't yeah. know. Yeah. So she was, was that so a great pleased. feeling. It was a beautiful you? feeling. Oh, that's So great. they start calling me doctor. So mm -hmm. that's how that started. Okay. That was that's 2020. Good. Oh. Not too long ago. Not too long ago. And then, and then another patient I hear, Rose, mm -hmm. she had cancer. She had a pacemaker in her chest. She mm -hmm. had high blood pressure as well. Wow. She was healed 90 days. Wow. Due yeah. to the compounds that I was making. Oh, wow. Okay. Pacemaker came out. Mm. She didn't call me doctor, though. She called me Jesus. Oh. I said, no, I can't take that title. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I can't take the title. Yes. God makes the herbs, I don't. Yes. I just know what to select. Yeah. And he also gave you the knowledge and the wisdom and understanding on how to do that. That's amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. To help others and to see them heal like that. It's a beautiful thing. Oh, yeah. I'm sure. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. The last patient I cured from cancer... They had ovarian cancer, which spread it to the lymphatic system and also to the lungs. Ooh. I healed in three weeks, 21 mm -hmm. days. The doctors are still wondering, what's, what's going on? How is that mm -hmm. possible? I tell her every day, tell them you have faith in God. Come on now. That's amazing that you give God the glory and that you didn't take glory for yourself. I don't need to do that. Yeah, that's amazing. But a lot of people don't. And you know the word of God does say that he shares glory with no man. But that's good that you, you acknowledged him first. Absolutely. And then you. That's amazing. I believe God is so pleased with that. And he's going to use you in other areas. Even, you know, healing, help healing people. And, so and he has. Yeah. I'm good. the chief of staff for my government. He need me there. I'm still doing herbs. I just sent off a pound of triple seven to a brother that has lung cancer. Hmm. I just did that today. Amazing. And so when you say government, this is what the USARI is, right? The United, the United States of American Republic, right? Yes. Okay. So 
the, for those of you who was wondering about that, the viewers out there, um, this is how um, he became, well, I'll say he already knew that he was a Moorish American. He had got word, but he also joined the government, which is the USAR, um, which is uh, the United States American Republic. So if, if you at any time uh, during this segment would like to join, or if you have any questions, at the end of the show, we're, before we close out, we're going to give you all that info for you can go and, um, you know, you could go and you could talk to someone and see about getting registered or getting to join the USA. Yeah, all right? Yes. Did I say that the right way? You said it correct. <laughs> okay, okay. So let's go on to the next question. Um, also, I would like to know, what um, what in inspired you to become a more? But even though you said you had gotten word from God or something, and you knew that He said that you are a more, and to come home, or should I ask you what inspired for you to keep to push it, and, you know, to get more into it? Okay, what inspired me to move forward was that mm -hmm. once I figured out that a citizen is someone that has permanent allegiance to a. Uh, a government, I'm thinking, hmm, permanent allegiance to a government. And when I looked up Title 28, Section 15A, mm -hmm. the U.S. or United States is not a government. It's a federal corporation. Mm -hmm. So, I didn't have permanent allegiance to a state. I had permanent allegiance to a corporation. You see? Okay. It's two different things. Mm -hmm. So that inspired me to move forward because I knew at that point I was still a slave. I was excited mm -hmm. to get out of there. Mm -hmm. I was so excited. I'm like, oh, yes. Yeah. When you say slavery or slave, explain to the viewers what you, exactly what you mean because some people get it confused. Slave, you know, like a slave, a regular slave, or how am I a slave? It's, it's so many different people thinking different thoughts because I am. When you say that, can you kind of... Elaborate a little bit more? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, slavery. I just want to say for the record, we thought it ended. Yeah. Due to the Emancipation Proclamation. Mm -hmm. But it didn't. America became the biggest slave corporation in the world because we signed the birth certificate. When our children are born, we signed the birth certificate from the corporation. And we hand our child over. That's the slavery. And guess what I mean? The birth certificate is what keeps you enslaved. As far as what they show you on television, the slaves have been hung and beat, and all they're doing is picking cotton and things of that nature in the field. Maybe that's what happened then. I'm not sure 100%. But I'm sure 100% that if I have permanent allegiance mm -hmm. to a corporation and not my government, I know I'm a slave because any corporation that owns the people, those are slave owners. That means the people are slaves. Yeah. Okay. That's what I mean. Okay. Good. I appreciate you breaking that down for our viewers out there. So there you have it, guys. If you're wondering um, what did he mean by slavery or slaves, he just broke, it, broke that down to you. Um, this is very good uh, information, very informative. I do appreciate you again. Um, we're going to go to the next question. Um, the next question is, um, so what is your position? Um, in, in, what is your position in, the, in this government? I am the Chief of Staff for the United States of America Republic. Okay, and what are your duties? My duties is to make sure that the staff, is, their workflow is flowing perfectly with no mistakes. They're getting the work out the door. Mm -hmm. They're preparing it. There's no mistakes and they're getting it out the door. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. So so you mean like, so you kind of double check to see, or not really double check, like you said, you have to make sure that they're getting all the information, everything that they need for the people that's joining or people that's already a member? Okay. okay. Let me explain. Whatever the president's agenda is, Okay. I make sure his agenda is out the door. For instance, 
Say, for instance, one of our nationals' cars are taken by a foreign officer. Okay. We're doing paperwork. We work on this case. I make sure that the case is being worked on properly. I make sure that once it's completed, we all make sure we look and make sure there's no mistakes, as I said in the beginning, and we make sure that we get it filed in the county. Oh, okay. Okay? Because the county, when you file it, there it's on record. That's a library. Okay. So it's on record stating that that's their property. No other nation yeah. can touch that property. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's my job. Oh, okay. And I also do work. I do a lot of the work myself. Mm -hmm. okay. Since we are, you know, we are shorthanded, of course, because we're building still. Yes. So we are, everyone is doing a different job. Yeah. But my main job is to make sure the workflow is flowing properly and that the work is getting out the door. So whatever the president's agenda is for that particular week, that's what we're working on. Okay. And that's what we focus on to get it out so that we can protect our citizens. Mm. It's about protecting the citizens, wow. their property, their persons, their houses, everything, their papers, everything. Wow. It's protection. That's amazing. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's very good. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm sure the viewers heard that. That's a great um, way of explaining um, that, and it's very, like I said, it's very informative. So, um, let me ask you this. This, uh, what was the most amazing uh, thing that you have seen happening within within this uh, the government? So There's far? so many amazing things. Everything I see is amazing. Okay. Okay. I want to start here. Okay. When I initially came to the new mecca, the province of Illinois, mm -hmm. I was pulled over and arrested. So this is where I show the power. This is so amazing. Mm -hmm. I asked the officer, did you read your charter? I just asked the question. This mm -hmm. is just to see where it goes. Mm -hmm. He's like, what is the charter? Mm -hmm. I knew I had him. Mm -hmm. I knew I had him. That's good. I was arrested. Yeah. I was taken to jail. My car mm -hmm. was towed. All of these things happened this one night. Mm -hmm. But two and a half hours to three hours later, yeah, you were out. the police sergeant running down the hall, let him out now. This is what he's saying. <laughs> let him out now. We contacted his government. He got to go. Oh, wow. Once they opened my gate, they unhandcuffed me from the bench. I initially responded, I am not leaving. It's 140 in the morning. Where's my car? Right. He's like, you got to go. Mm -hmm. I can't leave. Where's my car? He's looking around. It's told. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where am I at? I don't know where I'm at. I'm new here. Right. He's like, well, you can just go right down the street. That's what we pick you up at, right down the street. Mm -hmm. So by the time I walked out the door, mm -hmm. they escorted me out first. Yeah. Because, I, and I told them, don't touch me. They mm -hmm. didn't. They just escorted me out. Now, the prophet, Noble Drew Ali, said, I will be escorted out of the jail. Guess what? Mm -hmm. I was just that. They did, they did just that. Escorted me out. And by the time I got outside, my government was right there. Yeah. Mm. So that was amazing to me. Wow. I went to court. Mm -hmm. The first thing the judge asked me was, let me guess, you wasn't traveling? I'm sorry, you wasn't driving, you were traveling. I said, no, I was driving. And I have a license issued to me by my home state, the United States. Of America Republic. I said nothing else. Mm. <laughs> That's good. He looked down at the paperwork. He excused himself. He never come back to the courtroom. This is the judge? Absolutely. He never come back. They did a 15 minute recess. Mm -hmm. The clerk of court come on saying, let's hurry up and get him out of here. So the first question she asked was about my insurance. Was it valid or not? The prosecuting attorney says his insurance are valid. She said, what about the license? He says his license are valid in the province of Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. What about the other charges? There's no, 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 uh, no accident. There was nothing going on. Everything dismissed. 
Because initially I never stopped for the officers. I kept driving a whole mile until I got to where I was at. Mm. So I was charged with fleeing. I was charged with no license. I was charged with no license plates. I was charged with no insurance. I was charged with everything. But mm -hmm. when I went to court, mm -hmm. everything was dismissed. Wow, and we guys. do have it on video. Wow. So you do have footage of this? We have the footage. Okay. So this is where we're going to um, bring in the footage, guys. You'll see it. Uh, as soon as we put this video and this uh, episode up, you'll see the footage of this. It's, it's amazing. Well, back outside the talk. No problem. There no was problem. a miscommunication about... Hey, they, 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 no problem. No, we will communicate. No, no. We want everything to be squared. Thanks to for the government to come and grab the patient. So why is the caseworker down here with her? We're not asking for information. We're, 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 that's not what we're asking for. The release of the patient. Or an arrest will be made. At all. Or an arrest will be made. She refused what? Anything else with you all. You guys don't have jurisdiction. You definitely don't have jurisdiction. This is court order. And I can raise you. Like, note that if you pay attention to his language, he's talking about visitation. He's not saying that they are holding the child because the child's sick. He's saying they're not letting people go for visitation. We're not here for visitation. We're not We're here to take them up the and yes, go because they got a people for right. another court right. or another court. Right. We got the court. Right. That's it. What does that say about visitation? And the caseworker just said it on the phone. No, no, no. I have a visitation for the child. And I demand that he be released over to the court for physical work, everything. You know what I'm saying? You got to do a physical evaluation. You know, you got to own doctors, uh, everything, own medical. You got to know. With any answer, so. That's important. Looks like they obstructed. No, no problem. There's definitely obstruction of justice. I demand anybody that's a contestant of our court, not too much, right now, to be arrested. Anyone, him included, anyone that's in there in violation of this court order needs to be arrested right now. And he ain't even a director. He's not a director. He's and that's why he's a security officer. He's a security officer. Well, the child actually came to the child had asthma. Right? So they brought him to Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai tested him. So I'm going to go test him. Right? And they didn't bring him over here. Right? The conditions got worse after the they tested him. The conditions got worse after they brought him over here. Sent her over here. I'm going to sign that. I talked to Michael McCullough yesterday, and he told me that there was no issue. And anything that needs to be All right, they come. They come. Yeah. That's what they, they coming down. They coming down. Yeah. So that was yesterday. Yeah. I came up there last week. Hey, they coming down. Yeah. Peace and love. Ah, oh, boy. Thank you, guys. So we're going to let him go ahead and proceed with this conversation. <laughs> so good. Okay. And not only me, mm -hmm. but other nationals. For instance, our sergeant, Sergeant Felton Bay. Mm -hmm. He was arrested for fighting the sergeant, the police sergeant. For fighting the another? Absolutely. Okay. Because what happened, they come onto the property telling us we need to put a fire out. It was, it was hazardous, is what they said. No, it's not. It's control, and we're here. Mm -hmm. So the officer touched him like this. Mm -hmm. He grabbed him. They grabbed each other. They started wrestling on the ground. He was out of jail like four hours. Already out. No charges. Oh, my God. That's amazing. Very amazing. So, again... There's so many things. I can go on and on and on. And not just that. We have footage getting children and their parents out of the, I believe it's uh, Child Services, DCF? DCS. DCFS. DCFS, yes. Wow. So we have footage of that as well. Okay. Now, we were down at 
I don't remember the name of the hospital. St. Mary, St. Anthony, something of okay. that uh -huh. uh, nature. They had the woman and her child. They would not release them. From what I understand, they were there for two weeks. So what made them ob obtain them? What made them, um, what did they do for them to, to arrest them? Or Initially, she they... took her son to the hospital because he had bronchitis or something of that nature. He was sick. Okay. They wanted to give a corona shot. She said no. Mm. So they said it's medical neglect. They wouldn't mm. let them leave because they thought they were black, African, Negro colored people. Mm -hmm. So they kept them there for that reason. They had an officer by the door and everything. They could not leave. Wow. So we found out. Myself, I had just got back from Ohio. I was in Ohio for three days. Okay. So when I got back, mm -hmm. this is when I got back too. So we immediately went straight to St. Anthony's Hospital, I believe it was. Okay. And that's how it's, that's what happened. Wow. But they were released after we got the court order from the judge. Okay. Anyone that violates that order will be in contempt of court and they will be arrested. And we have that footage as well. <laughs> wow. God is good because no one was charged with contempt. The woman and her child was released. Mm. Islam? Islam. So, so many things. Yeah. And like I said, I can go on and on and on and on and on and on. We're going to finish. We're going to talk about that too. <laughs> <laughs> after the commercial break. So we're going to go to a, mer a commercial break in a few minutes. Um, but before we do that, I want to ask you this last question before we go to the commercial breaks. So if there's viewers out here watching uh, that would like to join the USAW or become a member of USAW, um, what are the procedures of joining the USAR? What do they have to do? First of all, they will have to get a citizenship application in or on file with us. It takes up to 90 days to process. It may not take 90 days, but it takes up to 90 days to process. It's a very thorough process. Hmm. From that point, either myself or the, or the other chief of staff will call out to that national or citizen and say, congratulations, welcome home, and we'll let them speak to everyone that's in that office. Okay. Okay? We issue birth certificates, mm -hmm. driver's license, license plates, registration to your vehicles. We issue everything that they issue and more. Mm -hmm. So once that process has been completed, okay. that first process, you can then get that ID, you can get that birth certificate, well, that birth certificate comes with that, that particular uh, intake package or, okay. or, or repatriation package. Okay. So, uh, from that point, you are actually a Moorish American. Mm -hmm. You're free. You are free. Not under a corporation, but you're reborn to the spirit and water, the water and spirit. You're no longer living in the flesh. Okay. That's truly amazing. Like I said, that was, and, and that was one of my questions too. Um, how do you go by joining? I know it's an application uh, Application process, process yes. yes. And, um, and once, you're, once you're in or beca you become a, a Moorish American under USAR, the government, um, that means you are there for, forever, permanent, right? You, well, Let's put it this way. Mm -hmm. We still have our own brains. Okay? Mm -hmm. You can be there forever if you are serving a God. But if you violate the oath that you signed with God, then you probably be removed from that position. So when you say position, what do you, what do you mean as far as a As far position? as, for instance, say if you are chief of staff, say if you are secretary of state, say right, if you are right. a judge. But what if you're just a regular citizen? Then you're, you're there forever. Sir. You're okay. there forever. That's what I mean. You're there okay. forever. Okay. Absolutely. Just a regular, if just a regular, a regular citizen. citizen. Okay. So basically a regular citizen will have the privilege to uh, enjoy the driver's license, the birth certificates, mm -hmm. you know, the registration. They get the chance to enjoy all the beautiful things that we offer for them. Okay. 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 So, there forever. Okay. 
And let me ask you um, one more question before we go <laughs> to, <laughs> to commercial. So I would like to know, I had some viewers that, that um, wrote in on, on my comment box. They want to know, like, do you, once you come a uh, step from out of the regular United States mm -hmm. and step over into the United States of America Republic, mm -hmm. right? Okay, um, do you guys offer stuff like they do here, I mean, well, in the United States, like uh, free housing for senior citizens? Mm -hmm. Do you offer um, free programs mm -hmm. for children? For school mm -hmm. learning, learning, um, learning programs for uh, college students and stuff like that. How does that work with the United States Republic? Okay, now we all know that you have to build your government, and and, yeah. and we're in the building process. Okay. Okay. We do have school for the mm -hmm. children, the okay. babies, okay. and mothers can come and teach their children. But eventually, mm -hmm. as we grow, mm -hmm. most definitely we can have the colleges. Okay. We can have those elementary schools. We can have those hospitals. We can have mm -hmm. everything that the United States of America have. Yes. Let's look at it this way. The reason they do have what they have is because off of taxes that the citizens are paying. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. So okay. this is why they got what they have. Okay. Now, if you look at their first government building, yeah. look how small that building is. Go look it up on Google. You'll see, oh okay. my God, look how they started. Yeah. But they had to start somewhere. Absolutely. That was their building process. So we are in our building process. Okay. So eventually in the future, mm -hmm. we're going to have everything and more. Okay. Because we are the national government. Okay. We just need the people to come home. Be free. Free yourself. Oh, right. All right. That's amazing. All right. We're getting ready to go to a quick commercial. Guys, don't touch that dial. Don't stroll. Stay right here. We'll be right back. This is Tip to T with Angie E. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. More questions with the doctor, Mr. Mustafa Shabazz L. See you in a little bit. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to the show, Tip to Tea. I'm your host, Angie E, where we talk about everything from motivational, inspirational, and of course, the tea. So today, before we went to the commercial break, we were talking to um, none other than um, Dr. Mustafa Shabazz L. Um, he is the Chief of Staff of the United States of the American Republic. So we're going to um, actually give him the camera and allow him to introduce himself and his title. Take, this, take the camera. Islam, everyone. I am Dr. Mustafa Shabazz L, Chief of Staff for the United States of America Republic. Yes. And we talked about uh, all of his, his position, his duties. Uh, if you guys haven't um, viewed that yet, uh, you can feel free to uh, click on, go to um, my YouTube channel and click it on and watch this episode. It will be editing up by next week you guys can get the whole footage the whole clip of uh, of this doctor uh mustafa shabazz it is very good it's very informative and for the for the, the viewers out there that's wondering how you can go and join you saw we will have um soon as we put the video up you, we will have all the information, everything you need as a lower third when we have uh, when we put up the episode. Okay, all right. So we're gonna go back to questioning him. We need we 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 getting a good kick out of this, and I'm learning some other some things too. Some I knew some stuff, but um, I'm learning a lot more, and this is what I need because I'm like a hands-on person. I mean, I, I like to have it right here in my face. Talking, and I can't. Don't give me a stack of papers and tell me, "Hey, read this," and then you join something. No, let me know. I want to know the experiences first. What's the um, what's the goals for it, and all that. But we're gonna get more into that uh, as we get into the show. Um, Mr. Um, uh, Doctor uh, Mustafa Shabazz L, I would like to um, now ask you, what is your vision for the future for this government? Well, my vision is to see our people. Mm -hmm. together as one, moving as one unit, perpetuating the government. That's the long-term version. All of our people, our nation of people, okay. moving in one. Forward line, a linear line, perpetuating the government. Short term, I want to see the same thing. Because that's what it's about. Without the people, there's no government. Hmm. So how do you normally, um, just say for instance, uh, me and myself, I could use it as an example. Uh, if I have like me, myself, and some other people that wants to join, if we want to know more questions, because like I just explained, I'm more of a hands-on person. Is there someone available that I can actually sit down and talk to like that could go over all the questions, all the concerns that I have. Um, mainly, I've had some older people, well, I'm not saying older, well, I'll say seasoned people that called in, they're 65 and older, and they have their pension, their social security, they had questions for me I couldn't answer. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that you're here again today, taking a, you know, taking the time out to answer these questions. How, you know, what are their, um, what's the protocol for them? What's the steps that they need to take or whatever to do so? Okay, to answer your first question. Okay. Someone to speak with, instead of reading a bunch of mm -hmm. literature. Yes. We have our president's calls on Monday and Wednesday, 6 p.m. Central Time. Okay. Okay? So the president, President C. Kennebe, Yes. what he does is teach. Okay. So all the information we can get on them two days, Monday and Wednesday, 6 p.m. Central Time. Okay. And we're on to whenever. Okay? Okay. Sundays we do have a chief of staff call as well, 6 p.m. Central Time to whenever. And we do the same thing. We read our Constitution. We, we read the executive orders. We're teaching. Okay. Now as far as, to answer your second question, as far as, uh, their benefits yeah. are concerned. Again, we issue and offer everything they do. Yes. Okay? Which we, is who is they? Just the, the, con the, the, con the, the United States of, of, America. of America. Yeah. Of America. Yes. 
Okay. The United States of America, I had to say it that way for a reason. Of represents the corporation. Okay. Wow. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. okay. So, so if they want to join, then they have to say that again. If they would like to join. Seniors, 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 rather. It's, it's the same process for anyone. Okay. Get your same application process. in. Same process. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. As far as their benefits again, mm -hmm. they can still receive those benefits from the state of. Okay. That's their money anyway. Right. Okay. Okay? Okay. See, now, it's a long story, but I'm going to make this really short. Okay. The money that they're receiving as benefits is their money Anyway, because the land belongs to the Americans. Yeah. yeah. Mm. The foreigners or the residents, they issue you that money because you're not sitting in your government seat. So they have to control that. Because they're saying you're not ready to govern self. So we're going to issue you a little bit of your money at a time. Mm. So they're like your payees. Wow. That's good. Good information. <laughs> um, so, I've uh, been told that you have a food, um, I don't know if it's like a, um, a food channel or you starting a food channel because I do know that you are um, now into an alkaline. Yes. And um, I want to, a lot of my viewers want to know, they want to change their diets. They want to live longer. And I do too. So we want to know first, um, how did you start this and what inspired you? Again, I was born with asthma. That's an upper respiratory infection. Yeah, I had that too. Okay. Again, I took, I had a lot of shots. I was at the doctor more than anyone I could think of. And yeah. they could never heal me. I know. It was always me getting a needle in the arm or the buttocks. One of the two. Yeah. I remember those days too as a kid. As a kid. And it's hard because as a kid, all you do is run around and play. Yes. How can you play if you have no lungs? Absolutely. So, when I caught cancer, I believe my last asthma attack, I, I was in my 30s. I'm 46 right now. Yeah. And I was in my 30s when I had an asthma attack in my sleep that almost killed me. Yeah, I can imagine. Mm. So, I find out what caused the attack. Because I was sick. I was so sick. I had cancer and I didn't even know. I was cold. It's so hot outside. I'm freezing. I'm mm. undercover. I'm, you know, I got chills. Yeah. I got bumps everywhere. Everything was happening so fast. And I used to be in great condition. And I always thought, for a person like myself to work out so much, how can I be sick? Mm-hmm. Yeah. When I went to Indianapolis, or Indiana, Indianapolis, yeah. for trucking school, I met a brother, a beautiful brother, Antoine Rouser. Mm. I would never forget Antoine. Mm -hmm. Because if it wasn't for him, mm. I wouldn't know anything about Dr. Sabi's work. Wow. So I was, it was meant for me to go there to get that license to meet him. Mm. The main thing, I met him. Yes. And I started studying from that point out. Wow. He is the one that told me that those chips you're eating is bad, that banana you're eating is bad. That was bad. Have you heard of Dr. Sabin? I'm thinking like Dr. Sabin, no. Oh, wow. Okay. Never heard of him. Mm -hmm. But come to find out, those things I was eating, meat, fish, chicken, mm -hmm. pork, lamb. Wasn't okay. It's no good because it's dead. Okay. That makes sense. It's dead. Yeah. When somebody or a body dies, yeah. you bury it. You embalm it and you bury it. You embalm it because of smell. Yeah. You bury it in the ground. So why is it that we eat the dead? We don't bury it. Mm -hmm. So if your pet died, you're going to eat it, you're going to season it. Mm -hmm. This is how we've been conditioned. Mm -hmm. Except it's not your pet. We go into the stores and we buy the dead flesh. And we eat it. That chicken is good. Mm -hmm. But we season it. We season it, so mm -hmm. that's why it's so good. Mm -hmm. mm. But the point is, that is going to cause a sickness. Yeah. A mucus buildup in the body. 
any disease or disease that they put out in the air is going to cling to the mucus. It sticks to it. The only way you can get sick is because you have a mucus infection. Mm -hmm. But if you eliminate the mucus, guess what? No sickness including AIDS nor cancer can live in your body. Mm. That's a 90 day process as well. And, and oh, it's a 90 day process to remove the mucus? Okay, did you guys hear that? Very good information. I hope you guys are taking notes because this is good. So, um, inflammation and mucus, is, that's, let, that basically let, starts let, sickness. Okay, go ahead. Let me, because you asked about the food. I want to yeah. answer that question quickly. Okay. Alkaline food, I make everything from scratch. I use spelt flour, teff flour, rye flour, quinoa flour. I can mix these natural grains that God made. Mm -hmm. It's starchless, no starch. But white flour and wheat flour mm -hmm. has starch. starch. Yes. And guess what? When you consume the starch, your body have to go into overdrive to get it out. Mm. So it's going to bring your blood pressure up. It's going to affect your kidneys, your liver. Every organ in your body is going to be affected. Your heart is going to beat faster because it's trying to get it out. And the more you eat, the more you eat, the worse you get. Oh, yeah. So we, do, we have to do a cleansing. Say that again? We have to do a cleansing. A cleansing? A cleansing. Okay. Even Christ fasted for 40 days and 40 yeah. nights. Yeah. We must follow the footsteps of Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay. We don't have to eat all the time, every day. It's not necessary. Okay. But when we do eat, the Bible says to eat fruit in the trees with seeds mm -hmm. as your meat. So we are supposed mm -hmm. to eat meat, but that's the fruit, mm -hmm. not the flesh. We are supposed to be a shepherd to the animal, not the butcher. It's a shepherd. And if you look up that definition of shepherd, you will see that's totally different from what a butcher is. Not the same. You okay. take care of those animals. You love those animals. Right. Thou shalt not kill. That's in the commandment. One of the commandments. Right. That's right. Well, you know, when we get, you know, get biblical, but we won't. Well, no, <laughs> it's just a it's, show. It's, it's not, just, it's not yeah. really biblical. It's yeah. just, mm -hmm. it's just a law that we should follow. Okay. Okay, that's what yeah. I'm, that's the point I'm making. It's just a law that we should be following. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Not religion, just a law mm -hmm. that we should be following. Because think about it. God said... Every plant has a distinct food. Every plant mm -hmm. does not eat the same food. Every animal does not eat the same food. An eagle eats meat. What does a hummingbird eat? Seeds, right? Nectar. Nectar? From a plant. That's Ooh. a bird, though. It's still a bird, though, right? I got that wrong. What did a gorilla eat? <laughs> um, Berries and leaves. Oh, yeah. What do the polar bear eat? Blood. Seal. Switch their diet. What happened? Well, polar bears, don't they eat fish and stuff out of there? They eat blood. blood. Of course. Oh, okay. But give him the fish. berries and give him the leaves of the gorilla. What happened? And then you get a gorilla sick. there. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. See, it's just a diet change. Mm -hmm. There is a such thing as gene-consistent food. The food has to be consistent with your genetic makeup. The Eskimo can eat fish all day. Why? Where's his geographical area? It's cold over there. Yes. So the blubber keeps him warm. If he switches diet with our original diet, he's going to freeze to death. Mm. He's going to die. If you eat fish every day, I'll give you 21 days. You're going to die. Mm -hmm. High cholesterol, too much cholesterol over the heart, you're going to die. You're going to kill yourself. It's not your mm. food. Yeah. It's a gene-consistent food. And then you're supposed to... Do do things in moderation anyway, right? Well, not, uh, not a lot of everything's in moderation. Yeah, even your saying. alkaline food should be in moderation. This is why we don't eat every day. You, what do you mean when you say you don't eat every day? Well, the so, body has to relax and rest. It has to be at ease and tranquil. How can your body be in tranquil or okay. at peace or calm if you're constantly eating? 
Yes. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> yes. It doesn't work that way. Well, okay. Yeah. So you're saying if you're on an alkaline diet and you eat alkaline food one day, then you take the next day and you just... Should, you should just drink your water and herbs. Okay. And then the following day you can eat again. You should drink your water and your herbs. Oh. <laughs> so... So you drink the water and herbs for how many days? I mean, you can do that for a week if you would love to. You can do that for ninety days if you would love to. Yeah. Think about the the the, the bear. Mm -hmm. What does she do? She eat for nine months of the year. Mm -hmm. Then three months out of the year, what she do? She just rests. She like goes to hibernation. No mm -hmm. food. What's she doing? Mm -hmm. She detoxing. She smart. She follows the rule of nature. Mm -hmm. We're no different from nature. We come from it. We must follow the rule. Self-preservation. That's good. Wow. So, is it, uh, um, let me ask you this. Is there a certain, uh, not recipe, but is it a certain protocol that you have to, once you're stepping out of, eating one way mm -hmm. and if you want to step over to eating alkaline mm -hmm. how long do you think that process takes does it take it does it depends on the individual or what do you say by you being the doctor it depends on the individual because again it starts here in the brain in the mind it starts okay. there so some people may just quit cold turkey I was one of those people that just quit mm. cold turkey. But some people have to take steps. They have strong willpower. <laughs> so with even with me, now I'm noticing that, well, of course I had to pray. Um, I used to eat all the time small portions, but I'm always snacking on stuff. stuff. So now um, I did this weight loss challenge. I lost nine pounds. Thank God for that. But what I did was... I stopped eating as much. Um, I fast at 3 o'clock every day. Good. Because I'm not hungry. I'm not hungry in the morning or anything. Because I normally would eat um, some fruit and yogurt cereal <laughs> and honey nut Cheerios. But I stopped, stopped that. Sounds I kinda, good. Yeah, it does sound good. <laughs> and it tastes good too. <laughs> Absolutely. But, but I'm learning. I've learned that the, the sugar and all that stuff when they like they say it's good for cholesterol but that's a lie so I, I believe it you know um no shade to catalog i mean <laughs> do what you want to do guys don't you know don't shun me but that's the truth it's it, you know i know that there is sugar mm -hmm. in there mm -hmm. and um, that's what makes it taste so good so i stopped now every blue moon now i'll have a taste for cereal okay um, and then I learned that when I, I, I started cooking more vegetables, like I made collard greens, I mean not collard greens, kale greens yesterday with no meat. That's not normally me. I'm normally using um, smoked turkey or something for the flavor. Um, I have not used no meat. Now I'm, I won't lie and say that I didn't cook any meat. I made steak on the side, you know, for a meat. I'm just saying, I did. But other than that, I, I didn't have anything else. And, um, and gradually, I'm going to start cooking my food with no meat at all. Just the vegetables. I did make sweet potatoes, and then I made macaroni and cheese. So, uh, that's just, you know, and I don't do it often. But I had a taste for it, and, and it lasts. You know, we can have it for leftovers sometimes. So, I'm trying. I'm, I'm eventually trying to wean myself from, I would like to make, do they have an alkaline macaroni and cheese? <laughs> <laughs> yes, they do. They have alkaline they pasta. Okay. So you can buy alkaline pasta, mm -hmm. mainly uh, chickpeas. Uh, I love chickpeas. Okay. Can, and they have pasta, they have Quinoa. spaghetti, they have, exactly, so you can actually buy that. Okay, and, and mm -hmm. use that because it's starch less. No starch. Yeah, no starch. Okay. Anything that has starch mm -hmm. is made by man. Anything that's starchless. starchless is made by God. 
Okay. And um, hopefully, guys, we'll be able to give you all the uh, information where you can pick these uh, good, delicious foods and healthy foods up. Uh, I, I, once you guys um, watch this episode in the, in its entirety, okay. So um, now you're saying that because I was told that you you guys made they made ribs out of portobello mushrooms, guys. Yes. I wished I had that picture. Yes. I wished I had that picture to I, see that. I don't know. My phone died on me. Well, once okay, you once I'm you get home, can you send it to me, and then I'll send it to my producer. Yes, I can do so that. So we we going we gonna put that picture on, guys. It looks delicious, <laughs> and it was. It tastes delicious too. Yes. That was amazing. Thank you. How do you make ribs out of portobello mushrooms? I I have to tell my mom about that. Yep. And she's like, what? <laughs> yeah, but yeah. You have to look at it this way. We all have great minds. Mm. Right. All we have to do is start thinking. A certain mm -hmm. way, yeah. and let God do the thinking for us. Guess what? It's going to be just that simple. It's not that hard. Mm -hmm. Just do it. And so I heard too. You can make tacos. Yes. And all this stuff with, with what they call it, uh, grain. Um, um, what do you call those nuts? Uh, um, Brazil nuts. Brazil nuts. Walnuts. Yes. That looked. Amazing as well. We didn't you don't see me all these pictures in front of the viewers. Because yes. people we can eat healthier. We just not we haven't we haven't been prone to it. We haven't was we wasn't raised to eat healthy, but now we're waking up and um it's never too late. It's never too late. We can start now, you know. Um we wanna live a long, healthy life. And if you wanna do that, we have to make sacrifices, great sacrifices for ourselves. And our families, our loved ones, if we want to be here um, to see our third or fourth generation, we can still do that. But we, it has to start somewhere, and it starts with us. We have to do better, and we have to eat better so that we can have a long, healthy life. And thanks to the doctor that's here, he's given us a lot, a lot of information. I hope you guys are taking notes because it is super, super exciting to know that we can eat better. I'm excited about this. I mean, that I can really eat better and feel better. You know, I, I, I'm, I don't have to be fatigued. I, I used to be so, dang, I used to lay around and just didn't feel like doing anything because of the food that I was consuming. That's amazing. So now that I'm fasting to 3 o'clock, that's God. Because at first I couldn't figure out, like, okay, I'm, um, I'm not hungry. Because normally you, I eat, okay? But, and then I was, I was gaining all this weight. But then I wasn't feeling well. I wasn't feeling my best. I wasn't feeling like, because um, I'm mostly, I'm very active. I'm an adventurous person. I love the outdoors. So I'm always outside in my garden. I'm always doing something outside. I wasn't doing anything. I was just laying around, putting on movie after movie, guys. <laughs> and me and Bryson, my grandson, we would just be in the house doing nothing. So now that I'm fasting and eating maybe once a day, I feel better. Absolutely. I feel so much better. Absolutely. The body is giving a chance to expel yeah. the chemicals the mucus, the dead flesh. So now, naturally, you're gonna feel better because it's, it's, it's funny how it works. People would think that if you don't eat, you have no energy. Yeah, but that's... If you, if you don't eat, you have more energy than you would ever have by eating the food you're eating. Yeah. Now, when it comes to alkaline foods, that's less detrimental. Less mm -hmm. detrimental. I wanna make that clear. Yeah. This is why you don't eat every day. Okay? So, but it's good to eat food that has no starching, food that has no gluten or glucose mm -hmm. or, 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 or what is it, milk, lactose. Mm -hmm. Lactose, yeah. So, it's good to eat, to not have food with that in it because like you said, you feel sluggish. Yeah. Tired, you want to go to sleep. Yes. It shuts you down. Yes. I have so much energy. That's good. I 
So I'm learning. Like I said, I'm learning more and more about this. But I do want to transform. I do want to do this alkaline thing. I'm, I'm excited about this, too. Just like um, when um, I roller skate and I, I dance to keep myself active, too. Because you can... You can have a certain diet, but you still have to do certain exercises mm -hmm. too to keep to maintain your weight and to keep. And then, do you know it does? It even help my mental state. Mm -hmm. Like it keep my my mind sharper. It makes me want to learn more. Like I could just go sit at my desk and just start fumbling with stuff just so I can learn. And I'm trying to read, and I'm I'm like, wow, I haven't did this in a while. Even since I wrote my, wrote my first book, I, I haven't been. I'm working on two books now at the same time because I'm I'm not eating like that. And I'm not sluggish and I'm not tired. So I'm I'm more eager, like I'm I'm, I'm over energetic. More almost. motivation. Yeah. Yeah. More motivation. That's mental, right? More energy. Yeah. That's mental and physical. Yeah. That's good. But this alkaline thing, you guys, y'all on y'all on the roll with this. And I see this going really, really far. A lot of people are looking for that now. Absolutely. People waking up. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So we're what we're going to be starting is twenty five dollar plates. Twenty five dollar plates. Wow. We're gonna start alkaline food. Uh, we'll have a menu. Uh, we'll put that together, and basically, anything you want on that menu, we can we can prepare that. Wow. When did this start, <laughs> guys? It, we want to know when it starts as soon as possible. Okay. As soon as possible. Okay. We cook all the time. Wow. Okay. I'm gonna be the. Well, I'm gonna be the first one because I. <laughs> I just want to get. Uh, I want to get these um, taco wraps and stuff. I want to. Man, I cannot. I can't wait. I want to. I want to taste that. Okay. Those are, they look delicious, but I do want to taste that. So, are you guys gonna be opening up a store real soon or a restaurant for for uh, alkaline? I see vegan a lot, and I see. Um, but the vet, vegetarian, pescetarians, yes, and yes. all that stuff. I never saw just driving down the street and saw alkaline restaurant on the go, eating healthy on the go, or something like that. I've never seen that. Well, to answer your question, yes, mm -hmm. we are. That's good. Yes, we will be doing that. Okay. We're going to have a Moorish American alkaline restaurant. Okay. And we already really have it, but we're doing it in house right now. Okay. Until we get the physical. The figure, the physical, actual store. Per Absolutely. Se. Okay. So. Do you know where 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 it be located, or or you have any idea? Have, right at the moment, no. We're still looking, but mm -hmm. by the by the end of the summer. Okay. We will have a location. Okay. By the end of the summer, we will have a location, and we'll be in that location. Okay. And before we close out the show, guys, we're going to give you his information, his email via uh, whatever, however way his um, his handles or social media, media handles. Uh, so when he get the store up and running, um, you guys can rush over there and get those get the good uh, nourish, nourishment. Uh, that that alkaline food, guys. So, like I said before, we um, before we conclude the show, we're gonna make sure we get some information for you guys, so that you guys can start your journey um, of eating well. That's good, good show. Well, we're getting ready to close out. I'm gonna let you close out. <laughs> What I want to do is provide you all with my email. This way you can contact me if you have any questions. That will be usarcos46 at gmail.com. Again, usarcos46 at gmail.com. If you have any questions about repatriation, Give me a call. I am Dr. Mustafa Shabazz L, Chief of Staff for the United States of America Republic. If you have any questions about herbs, email me. Excuse me, I said give me a call. Email me. Mm -hmm. If you have any questions about anything, just email me. And if I can't answer any questions for you, then my partner will.
right. That's good. So there it is, guys. You got all the information for our our guest today. It was a this has been an amazing show. Very in informative. Uh, like I said, I hope you guys took notes because I am I, I did. Trust me. Um, it's time for our people to wake up. We we need to wake up. And as I say, for, for I'm saying for our people, I am too. I'm waking up more. I'm connecting myself with people like his uh, the doctor. Dr. Uh, um, Mustafa Shabazz, I am so grateful that God has brought us together in, in a certain type of way. It's all divine because I have been praying. I would love to know um, a lot more about the USAR and I am learning. Um, so I want to say thank you again for coming on the show, Doctor. It was amazing. And hopefully we could do another part, part two segment if you would be willing to come out. Um, again on the show once you get your restaurant open and maybe you can bring some samples I don't know but we're gonna get this up and you know um, more uh, um, social media attention I don't know but we need to get this out there to help our people all right and with that being said uh, we're gonna go ahead and close out the show see you on the next episode um, so we're gonna say it's, uh, if you or anyone you know in the Chicagoland area would like to join me on the show or if you have any um, any questions or if you want to join me on the show go to um, my YouTube channel um, which is Angela Eskridge just type in my name and feel free to leave me a comment below uh, for, for more information about the show uh, you could go to my YouTube channel again uh, Angela Hutch Angela Eskridge and type in my name okay and I'll see you guys on the next one. Don't forget, this is Tip to Tea with Angie E. See you next on the next one. Okay.